Hello, welcome to the People's Church online service. Whether you are joining us live on a Sunday morning or later on in the week, it's great to have you with us. My name is Beth and I'm a member of the Eden team. Today, as part of our service, we're going to be hearing from Jonathan, who's going to be uh, bringing us the preach. We're also going to be singing as part of our worship to God and hearing some testimonies of members of our church. Right now, we're going to go into a time of worship. Amanda sharing her story of how she came to faith. Hi, my name is Amanda. Basically, I was in quite a bad situation um, with the COVID-19. Um, I was working in a residential setting where people were actually falling ill and dying around me. 
um, I became quite depressed and anxious about this um, so I let it affect me I suppose you could say that I ended up not going out anywhere not even for shopping or anything like that I didn't go to work I developed COVID symptoms myself so that set me on a downhill spiral at some point I thought I need some food so I rang the Hope Centre which is um, a place in Partington um, and they gave me some they brought me some food and stuff and then they asked me did I want anybody to, to phone me just to see how I am and I thought well that can't you know uh, be a, a bad thing because my family don't live near me they weren't allowed to come here um, and I live alone so I started talking to Beth um, and it was so nice to have somebody so warm and friendly to talk to um, and I just started talking to her about you know things that were going on in my life um, and she, she told me that um, she's a member of the church and things like that and that they'd pray for me. Um, well, talking to Beth made me feel a lot better, um, but I was still in a downhill spiral, um, having to see a psychologist, um, not going to work because I was so terrified. I didn't leave my house for 10 weeks. Um, I then started to feel a little bit better and I started to ask Beth, um, and Beth said that they'd been praying for me at, at the um, People's Church. So I said to Beth that I'd like to come along um, just to say thank you. And that would be as far as it would go for me. Um, but I think God had other plans. <laughs> um, I, I logged on and as I, as I was logging on, um, God spoke to me and said to me that he was here for me um and he he would support me i logged on and from that day i've never looked back um i met my second family my my church family um i've been doing alpha um and just going to church every every sunday on zoom doing the alpha um after about a week i started to feel so much better um and I love speaking to God. Um, I felt lifted. I went back to work about a week later um, and I started to ask God to help me, ask God to take this pain away from me. I had some other medical issues that I was worried about and I asked God to take these and help me with them, which he did because I was absolutely petrified and then all of a sudden I wasn't, which was really, really amazing. Every day, I have reassurance and God God has got my back. Another thing that God did for me, um, basically my daughter was doing Alpha and I didn't even know she was doing Alpha um, and it just came up in conversation um, and it's such a blessing and such a gift that me and my daughter found God at the same time. How bizarre is that? <laughs> um, so now if we have a problem or there's something you know that we can't you know think to solve i feel i can say to my my daughter now we need to ask god and she'll say the same to me have you spoken to god today um and it's just wonderful um i was in such a dark depressing place um where i didn't even leave my my house um to suddenly being uplifted um, I feel God is all around me. I feel him in my heart. Um, and I feel everything is so much different. Um, my whole life is different. Um, it, it's like I've got my old body with a new me inside it. That's the only way I can describe it. But it was a, sometimes I think you have to hit rock bottom to, to realize and for God to sort of say, right, I'm here. Um, he's obviously called me before, um, but I've probably not listened. Um, but I've listened now. Um, my life has changed so much and I know that God has got my best interests at heart. I know that God is in my life and it can only be positive from now on. I know there are bad things out there. I know there are negative things, uh, but with God in my heart, I feel I can um 
tackle things i can i can just ask god to help me i can ask god to lift the depressions from me if i ever feel them um it's been the best journey that i've ever had um, i'm so happy and i just want to thank god for coming into my life and coming into my heart and blessing me with his love and all the wonderful people that i've met i just i'm just a different person thank you so much amanda for sharing your story of how you came to faith it's amazing we're now going to go into another time of worship the throne of God above, I have a strong, a perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands, my name is written on his heart, I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me then sleep on. No tongue can bid me then sleep on. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, of what I look and see in there, made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Saviour died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on Him and pardon me. To look on Him and pardon me. Behold Him there, the risen Lamb. Spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. One with himself I cannot die, my soul is purchased with his blood, my life is hid with Christ on high, with Christ my Saviour and my my Saviour and my God. I bow before the cross of Christ and marvel at this love divine. God's perfect Son was sacrificed to make me righteous in God's eyes. This river's depths I cannot know, but I can glory We're now going to hear from Jonathan, who is sharing from Genesis 2 and 2 Corinthians. Morning everyone, thank you for being with us this morning, hope you're doing alright. Next week we're beginning a new preaching series, working our way through the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, using this moment that we find ourselves in as an opportunity to reflect on and to think through how we've been spending our time, our energy, our lives really, and to look at what really matters in life and to reset our lives around those things. So I think it'll be fun. I hope you can join us in the coming months as we work through that. Before we do that today, I wanna to think through something of the big story of our Christian faith and the good news of the message of Jesus. If you're already following Jesus, then to remind us of that good news and to call us to live in response to and in light of that good news. And I wanna take us to two trees this morning. One that maybe looks a little bit like this, where we find the fall and our sin, our rejecting God. And then one that looks a little bit more like this, where we can be saved, find forgiveness, a new life, and to live out that new life. So we're going to go over to the Bible reading for this morning. 
There's two passages which we'll hear now and then we'll begin to unpack them. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 to 17. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. Uh, the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river water in the garden flowed from Eden. From there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is Pishon. It winds through the entire land of Havila. There, uh, where there is gold, the gold of that land is good. Aromatic resin and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the east side of Asher. And the fourth river is Euphrates. The Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20 to 21 We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The first passage takes us right back to creation, to the origin story and to the fall of humanity. And it's a story that is actually easy to relate to because we can quite easily find our place in that story in Genesis 2 because in the middle of God's creativity there is the opportunity to choose life to live in relationship with God to live under God's loving hand and his leading or to go our own way to reject God's instruction to think we know better than God or to actually just simply reject God and live for ourselves we see that in Genesis 2 and we see that in our lives. We see in Genesis 2 what happens. The seed of a thought of living opposed to God's will and opposed to his purposes and opposed to his instruction, that seed is planted. Did God really say that? Are you sure you're going to die? Why don't you just do it anyway and see what happens? That seed is planted and it grows and the people act on that. And it all unravels from there. In, in Genesis 2, it's Adam and Eve, but it could so easily be us, couldn't it? Because actually we see that in our own lives. We could easily find our names in that story because every one of us has lived that story. Every one of us has, at some point in our lives, lived for self. We've done our own thing. We thought we knew better than God. We've let the seed of doubting God and doubting his word grow we followed our own path, you know, my plans, my priorities, it's my life and I know best. We've all been there. In fact, some of us might be there right now. Isaiah 53 puts it this way. It says, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. We've all done it. We've all been there. We've all walked away from God to some extent. We've all chosen our own path ahead of God's path to some extent. We've all gone astray from God's good plans and purposes for our lives. We've all turned our back on God to some extent. And it's caused a separation. It's caused a breaking in our relationship with God. We were created to walk with God and instead we've walked away from God. It's the road to death. It's the road away from God. We, we chose to believe the father of lies instead of trusting the father of light. Every one of us has been in that place or is in that place. And if that sounds like bad news, well, actually it is. There'll be people who say, well, that's just an origin story. It's just a, you know, a Near Eastern origin myth. It's a setting the scene or whatever. But, you know, even if you take that view, 
we still find ourselves we still find our place in that story it's our experience we can all relate to that we were created to walk with god but we've turned away from him we're walking away from god trying to do our own thing and each one of us still has this longing because we were made to know god to be loved by god and to love god yet instead we filled our lives with all sorts of other stuff and we'll we'll get into some of that other stuff as we work through Ecclesiastes in the coming weeks. But let's own it. You know, we've been there. We've been people who've walked away from God. We've been people who've turned our back on the Lord. We're people who thought we knew better than God. We may still be in that place right now. But the good news is that God, in his loving nature, has made a way back to him through his son, Jesus. As we heard in 2 Corinthians earlier, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The good news of the Christian faith is that while we did walk away, while we have walked away, while we may be walking away right now, God has made the way back for us. Where the wages of sin is death, where we chose the path that leads to death and separation from God, God has made the way back. At the cross, he suffered death for our sin. Jesus took on our rubbish. And because of that, he invites us, instead of separation from God, reconciliation with God. We can know God. We can know his love, his presence, his purposes for our lives his spirit in our lives once again instead of a broken relationship with god a restored relationship with god instead of separation from god living loved by god and in that relationship with god through jesus he's the one he's the way he's the truth he's the life where humanity chose this tree that leads to death Jesus hung on a tree. Okay, planks of wood from a tree. Died for our sin. Made the way back to God possible. We've already heard a bit of Isaiah 53 about each of us going astray, but Isaiah 53 paints a full picture and continues looking ahead to what Jesus would do at the cross. It says this, Surely he took our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Philippians 2, a different author, a different passage, actually after the crucifixion, after the resurrection, looking back at the cross, says this of Jesus, that he did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. By taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Here, really simply, is, is the big story of our faith, that every one of us is living in light of or under one of these two trees, the tree of self-interest, the tree of self-centeredness, the tree of self-realization and selfishness, where we're trying to make our own path, we're walking away from God, we're doing our own thing, or we're living in light of this tree where we see self-sacrifice, where we see self-giving, where we see self-denial, so that we could experience new life in Christ. 
in Genesis and maybe in our lives right now, we see people of self-interest. But in Jesus we see self-sacrifice, the Lord who gave up his life so that we could be forgiven, set free and reconciled with God. In Genesis, and again maybe in our own lives now, we see people who are self-centred, wanting power, wanting knowledge, vying for position, doubting God and trusting self ahead of God's word. But in Jesus we see a selfless king relinquishing his power or using his power to die for our sin, making himself nothing, using his power to wash feet. Not using his position for self, but for others to bring new life, to change lives and bring healing and hope. In Genesis, we see people who are trying to self-realize, do, do their own thing, go their own way, plow their own furrow. But in Jesus, we see the Lord who denies himself. The Lord who says, Father, if there's another way, please take this cup of suffering away, yet not what I want but what you want. He's the Lord who denies himself and goes through the agony of the cross that we could be forgiven, set free, transformed and have a new life now and a hope for eternity. Human sin meets the purity of God and the love of God and the justice of God and the grace of God all coming together in the cross that we could know God now and that we could live new life in him. The Genesis story is our story. We've all been there. We may be there right now. But the redemption story can be our story too. Jesus went to that cursed tree and suffered death to bring us back to new life. New life now and eternal life. He was raised to life. And we can be raised to new life in him too. If you're here and you haven't yet responded to what Jesus did for you, I'd encourage you to explore that. To talk to a Christian you know or trust or even to take that step of faith now, to pray now with us and to say, Lord, I, I want to receive what you've done for me. Lord, I'm sorry for my wrongs. Lord, I turn from my wrongs. I put my life in your hands. Please come into my life. And if you invite him into your life, he will come in. And he'll do a work on you from the inside out. But it's about us relinquishing that control and saying, God, you know, and saying just like Jesus did, Lord, not, not my will, but your will. God, I'm not going to be the, the boss of my life. I'm going to follow you, believing you've got a good plan for my life. And if you're already a believer, and I think many of you are, you know, and I know that many listening, tuning in today will already be believers. I think the challenge for us is, are we still living in light of the cross? Are we still living in light of this? Are we still living here? Or are we veering back here? You know, are we veering back to the old tree in self in self-centeredness, in self-interest, in selfish living, in self in, in selfish choices. You know, maybe once we, we did pray a prayer and say, God, I give you my life. But actually, we've got to live that every day. You know, have some of us slipped into that place of, I know you're there, and I'm grateful for what you've done, Lord, but I'm going to write the next few chapters. We'll take it from here. We're good. Thanks. If you're with us this morning and you're a believer and you may have been for some time now, I think the challenge is this. How are you doing at living in light of the cross? How are you doing at following the way of Jesus? Not simply receiving what he did for you, but following in his footsteps, in his example, in his life, in his teaching. How are you doing? at picking up the cross that he calls us all to pick up in self-denial, in being a follower and letting Jesus be the Lord of our lives and be the leader of our lives in every area of our lives. It's not just about accepting and receiving what he's done for us. It's about saying, God, 
you're in control Jesus you're the Lord and I'm gonna be a follower of you and I'm gonna follow your teaching and I'm gonna follow your instruction and I'm gonna follow your leading and even if what you are saying to me doesn't quite fit with how I feel or what I choose right now I'm gonna trust that you're the Lord because that's what being a, a follower is isn't it that's what picking up the cross means is saying God this is what I wanted for myself but I'm gonna trust that what you call me to is better and how are we doing at kneeling at the cross in worship lost in wonder love and praise in awe of the grace and mercy of God for sinners like you and me the grace of God is amazing every one of us has gone astray each one of us has turned to our own way yet through Jesus the Lord laid on himself the iniquity of us all if you're already a believer how are you doing at following his example his life his teaching how are you doing at denying yourself when God calls you to things that you wouldn't choose for yourself and he calls you to put down things that you would choose for yourself and how are you doing at being a worshipper in light of who Jesus is how are we doing at sharing this message in light of the goodness of God we have received haven't we the greatest news ever the greatest gift ever new life now the Spirit of God living and active and present in us and the promise of eternity with God in his coming kingdom and we're called to share part of following the example of Jesus is sharing that of being a people who speak and live out the good news it's true isn't it that that while we could have prayed that prayer a while ago we could have just drifted in our faith or plateaued in our faith just let life get on top of us and before we know it we're veering back to that old tree to old habits to old thought patterns to old behaviors but God is calling us once again to be made new in him to live in light of the cross on bank holiday Monday I was cleaning our patio I got the jet wash out not cleaned the patio for years and it's amazing how much dirt and mud and other stuff has just become ingrained in the slabs that actually to be fair you wouldn't know it was there but it but it was there and you saw it as we washed those patio slabs you could actually write your name in them there was that much dirt there to the untrained eye you wouldn't know it was there but as you clean it up you see wow look at what color it was meant to be look at how far it's drifted from what it was meant to be and we give it a good clean and then obviously once you start on one one bit looks really clean and then everything else looks really dirty in comparison you know we did the whole lot but actually I think that could be a picture for what some of our lives of faith have looked like we started out sparkling new alive in Christ made new in Christ and just over the years over the months we've drifted from what we were meant to be our life looks more like the old tree than the new life in Christ and today the Lord is calling us back to that new life in him if you haven't responded to what Jesus has done for you I'd really encourage you to do that but I can't force you to do that if you're already a believer let's keep living in light of this let's keep living in response to this let's keep living sharing unashamedly because it is life-changing news and let's pray together Lord God I thank you that where each of us finds ourselves in the Genesis story as a people who have turned our back on you gone our own way rejected you thought we knew better than God I thank you that where we find ourselves in that story that that we can find ourselves in this story of the cross where you died for our sin you died for our rubbish you died that we could be forgiven and set free and made new Lord I pray if there are people here with us today who don't know you God that you would stir them to put their trust in you for restored relationship with a loving heavenly father reconciled with God their creator and their their redeemer 
And Lord, for those of us who are here already following you, God, I pray that you'd fill us afresh with your spirit. That you'd refine us, that you'd make us the people you call us to be. That we'd be greater followers of Jesus. People who are not afraid or ashamed to pick up the cross and follow. That we'd be true worshippers. And we'd be great sharers of this greatest gift that we've received. So come Lord, fill us afresh with your spirit. Help us to live in light of the cross. Not veering back to that old tree, but lost in wonder at who you are and what you've done for us, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're going to respond in worship now. And use this time as an opportunity to sing to the Lord, to bring your life before him, to be still before him and let him speak into your life. Let's respond in worship now. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the name. me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know is your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne. Don't 
Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you made. I've heard thousand stories of what they Think you're right, but I've heard a whisper of love in dead of night. You tell me that you're pleasing, but I'm never alone. You're a good father, true you are, true you are, true you are. Searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father, to you are. Thank you for joining us this morning. If you are watching this live, we're going to head back over to Zoom and go into some breakout rooms and a time of prayer. If you want any more information about the church or anything that has been said in this morning's service, then please contact us on the contact details that will come up in a bit. Thank you for watching. Bye.